So now it's time to tone the canvas and first I'm going to get rid of this painting. It's what I've been doing with my son with some huge bubbles back four or five years ago. And we put this one up. This is a new painting of black caviar. Now this painting is 20 inches wide, 14 high. And all I do is have an old sock. I use some thin down paint, mixture of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. That's my usual combination of colors that I do this with. And I just cover the whole canvas. Thin it down with a little turpenoid. Turpenoid is odorless turpentine. Uh, regular turpentine in a small area like this, you wouldn't even be able to work here because it just is such a strong odor. And it's also toxic. Oops. Let me straighten this out. Crank this down a little bit more. Okay, now that we're done here, we'll let it dry for a day and I'll get going on it tomorrow. Talk to them. So now we're ready to start on the actual painting itself. And like I told you before, I am using this as a reference material. As you can see behind the horse, there's a whole uh, crowd of fans watching. Uh, so today I'm going to be putting in those guys in and I'm just going to be putting dots of color. In order to show that she is, looks like she's really traveling fast, after I get all the color in, I'm going to go ahead and use a, a brush and blur it sideways to, to give it the illusion of motion. So let's get started. With scenes like this, I always like to have a little bit of sky. And since this is late afternoon, uh, and the sun is actually coming back from this this area right here um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make the sky actually very warm looking multiple different types of flesh tones and as you see you can see I'm just putting them in here haphazardly but also these are supposed to be the faces of the people they don't have to be detailed because like I said earlier I was going to I'm going to blur them and if you are to put a, a detail in this sort of a painting detail of say people's faces things like that it, actually brings people's attention away from the subject material which is the horse and so I'm just laying in all of these different things right now and I'm kind of experimenting I've only done this two or three other times and each time I do it a little bit differently Now you can see I've got that whole crowd in front of the 
rider and above the horse's ears and head filled in. Uh, just splotches of color. Now I'm just going to take this soft brush, uh, soft ended brush, and go very slightly across all of these and blend them to make, give it the image, the illusion of motion. of the crowd done. I'm going to go ahead and finish up back here and uh, when I'm done there I'll come back and do this retaining wall. Finishing up the blending of the on the right side of the painting here, and then I'll go back in and blend that out again. Sometimes you, you blend it too much, which is what I did. That's okay. It's a great thing about oil paints. You really can't make a mistake that is, will destroy your painting. of um, sap green, alerzum crimson, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow pale, and between those colors I'll be able to get, I should be able to get all the green on this painting done. You add the red to it, it gives it a really dark intense color. If you use just pure sap green it's more like uh, Christmas mail, it's more like color crayon green. Just take my word for it. You get a lot better green this way. 